What's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to the C++ series. Now, I don't want to scare anybody, but in this lesson, this is a bit of a warning video. And I'm going to be talking about the warning with the size of operator. So let's go ahead and look at an example and see how size of can be used or sometimes misused. And I'm making this video because I see my students do this or struggle with this idea all the time. So I just want to provide a little bit of clarity and hopefully help some of you folks avoid making mistakes. So with that said, let's go ahead and begin. So this is a warning video and I just want to show you the size of operator. Now we've been using this previously and we have a few examples here. So I've created variable x, set it equal to 7. I've created a pointer, an array that is allocated on the stack. That means it's a fixed size. This is always going to be five elements and a dynamically allocated array. So this is a pointer and it's pointing to a chunk of memory that's allocating 1000 integers for us. Now, I've gone ahead and compiled and run this program for us so you can see the different sizes of the data type. You'll see the integer is four bytes. The pointer is eight because I have a 64 bit system. Now, why this is eight, again, the size of the pointer, because I need to be able to address any potential piece of memory. And I need eight bytes of do, to do that on a 64 bit system. So pointers are always gonna be eight bytes on my system. If you have a really old machine, say something from 10 or 20 years ago that you're running, yours might print out four here because you have a 32 bit architecture that you're running on. Now, that's one distinguishment to make and just why this pointer is larger than the actual integer type. Because remember, pointers store addresses and those addresses can be particularly large. Now, those are the first two values that we sort of looked at, our primitive types and pointers. Mm -hmm. Now, the stack allocated array here, when I print the size of, I get 20. Well, if I have five elements and each of those are four bytes large, then it makes sense that I have 20 bytes here. And the compiler is able to figure this out at compile times so before you've run your actual program. And that's a really important thing to keep in mind here when using size of, because I'll see folks say, oh, I can compute what the size of this array is by taking the size of the array and dividing it by the type size. And that is true. You can figure out that this is five elements large, but that's only if you have a stack allocated array here. That's because, again, the compiler has this information on hand and says, aha, I'll tell you exactly how big this array is in terms of the bytes that were allocated for this data type here. Now, where this is different, why folks run into trouble is they'll use size of on dynamically allocated arrays here. So in this instance here, the dynamically allocated array, while it is an array of a thousand integers, Again, it's only a pointer that's pointing to the first integer in that 1000 integer chunk of contiguous memory representing that array. So again, we just get the pointer size. So that's something really important to keep in mind. Now we haven't looked at many standard template library data structures, but I'm gonna just go ahead and put the vector in here because this is another one where I often run into uh, problems with students where if I create some a vector of integers. I'm just going to call it V here. And let's just go ahead and use some of the member functions here to push back a bunch of elements here. Let's say I push back seven or eight here. And then I check what the size of V is. Now, this will be a little bit of a pop quiz for you to think about here. And remember what size of is doing. It's returning the size of this data structure. Okay, so let me go ahead and recompile, give you a chance to pause the video and think about what the size is going to be. Is it going to be the size of this data structure or give us the number of elements that we have here? All right, did you pause? Well, let's go ahead and look at the answer. And V is 24. So it's not exactly obvious how we got there. Let's see how many integers we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that could be six integers times four. Maybe that could be 24. Let's verify though. What if I add a bunch of integers? If it's true that I've added more integers, this size should be bigger than 24. So let me go ahead and run, recompile. 
and it's the same size. So size of for our vector here, again, is just retrieving the size of the actual data structure. If you want how many elements are actually in the data structure, you need to use something like uh, b dot size to return the number of elements. And those are things that are built into the data structure. So folks, I hope this is a little bit of a warning video and just to tell you again what size of is doing. Now that we've learned about memory that can be allocated on the stack, the heap, or perhaps within a data structure, we do have to be a little bit careful with that data structure um, and how we measure its size. Or rather, I should just say, be careful with the size of operator. It's very handy for telling you how large a type is, not necessarily how many elements are stored within that type. All right, so if you found this helpful, just a little bit of wisdom from students and other folks that I've taught or even mistakes that I've made, make sure you like and subscribe and maybe I can do some more of these sort of programming wisdom videos as they come up or as folks ask questions. All right, thanks for your folks time and we'll see you in the next one.